And I just want to talk a little bit about kind of at the process that, that MediaWorks go through when we're creating content marketing pieces. Okay, because again, it's, you know, we create some data and, you know, research. David's talked very passionately about that, um, which is great. And, and stage one and stage six are the critical stages in creating content marketing uh, or content pieces uh, and the success in them. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put that research in. Okay, so, so we figured out our audience and who we're going to target. Okay, we've got to put that research into trend analysis, what are people talking about, what's current. That James Bond one was very on topic. It, was for, it went out last October with the launch of the, the latest Bond uh, film. So again, we've got that kind of topical um, thing there. Can you say all right? Um, what we've also got, you know, looking at media monitoring, what's happening in the media. So, you know, we might want to put one about the electricity companies uh, screwing everyone over as they continuously seem to do so. Um, personal opinion, not media works. Um, you know, you might want to do an FAQ investigation. You have, you know, you have a big FAQ section on your site looking at your site search logs. Okay, so, so people might search for information on your site that you don't have. Okay, now that's obvious someone wants that information. Uh, so using that, you know, seasonalities, what, what are coming in, you know, so we're coming into Christmas, uh, then we'll be coming into Valentine's Day, then Mother's Day, then Father's Day. So thinking around kind of seasonal events, depending on what you can tie in there. Any offline PR activity you can do, you can pull into there. Um, again, you know, informative searches using things like Google Trends, uh, the Google Keyword Planner as it is now, looking at kind of what people are looking for, what they're hungry for. Okay, and all these are available to us, and asking your audiences and all that stuff uh, that feeds into that. Okay, and then you've got to create the concept. Okay, uh, and this is very much being, you know, on brand. Okay, so are, are you a funny brand? Are you, do you want to be enticing? Do you want to be informative and topical? Because if you're putting a piece of research out there, it's very difficult to be funny because if you want the credibility of that research and people to share it, you don't want to make a joke of it, okay? How readable is it? And again, that comes to sometimes from an infographic point of view, the design, okay? Sometimes it just looks like people have just stood back, um, a six-year-old and just chucked paint on a wall, okay? And we've seen some very poor examples. It's very cluttered, it's very mixed. You can't actually read it easily. You can't digest it. Okay, and there's a stat there about eight out of 10 people read the headline and that's it. So you've got to make sure that, that headline's punchy. Okay, so you know, sensationalize it. Okay, if you, if you want to be uh, that way as well. Uh, topical, relevant, of course, you've got to make sure you're legal. What you're saying is not going to come and bite you on the backside. Uh, two months down the line when the Apple lawyers or whoever else gets hold of it. Um, making sure that it's consistent with the, the tone of voice of the brand, making sure that it's, it's carrying through your offline promotional activity. But then you, you know, you've got to publish it so you might have a scheduled calendar. But it's the syndication of the content that is going to be uh, prove ultimately the success or the failure of all of that hard work. Okay? And again, step six should happen before step one, okay? which might sound a bit odd. Okay, but we've done a lot of work building up relationships with big sites, okay? And um, if there are any journalists in the room, I apologize, but some of them are lazy, okay? Some of them want to put on a plate. So if you can go to a journalist, reach out and say, look, you know, I'm working with such and such, or we are such and such, and this is our area of expertise. What are you looking for? What, what's coming up? Okay, talk to these media organizations. Okay, if you're prepared to do the hard work and they're prepared to take the credit for it, then why not let them do that? Okay, they're also sharing your brand. Okay, so the syndication and creating relationships, and sometimes it'll be co-creation. Okay, so, so you know, co-creation again, uh, David touched on a very, a very buzz phrase at the minute. You know, working alongside an organization together, if you can provide one piece of expertise and they can provide the other piece of expertise, why wouldn't you join together these days? Okay, um, and yeah, I mean, look, these are some relationships we've got, you know, there are lots of organizations locally, nationally, okay? And, and it's all about picking the phone up, dropping them an email. It's a slow process, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, don't expect to, to pick the phone up with The Guardian and them to share your content tomorrow. It takes time to nurture those relationships. And if you can just drop them little nuggets every now and again, you know, th that, that helps as well. Um, and, and again, what we're using these sites for is their social media following, okay? We know, for instance, the, like, the audience of Mashable, which is a, a big tech website, are more likely to share things than people of the journal. Okay? The journal generally tends to have an older readership. Okay? So, so they're less likely to share these things. 
Okay, so, so what we want to do is we want to say, right, where are we going to target? What, what do we have and which sites should we target? So if, if we've got a big fashion piece, we might want to go to Esquire, GQ, whatever. If we've got a really topical piece, then we might want to go to some of the, you know, the FT, the Huffington Post, whatever, to, to share that and, and engage their audiences. Okay, so thinking about what your topics are, thinking about the target sites uh, will really help as well. And here's just a, um, a couple of examples, and this kind of ties the whole theme uh, back together. So, so this is one that, that we did for um, a shoe retailer that we have, okay, um, that's loosely associated with fashion. So, so ordinarily, the client wouldn't talk about Doctor Who fashion, okay? And again, we, we launched this right as the hype was going on about the new Doctor. I'm not a Doctor Who fan, so I couldn't tell you who it is. But, you know, who, whoever he is, I'm sure he's great. We shared this about Doctor Who fashion. So, again, what we had was we had the Doctor Who fans, we had the Mashable audience, and we had the people who just like to be those social kind of uh, people that get things out first. Doctor Who. Everything's around Doctor Who. It's trending. I've got to get something out. Okay, so, so we've got those people as well. So, so this creates some great content uh, from a startup point of view. So we looked at the Doctor Who fashion over the years. Um, Mashable picked this up. Okay, so, so we hosted this on the client's uh, blog. Uh, we then got in touch with Mashable and said, right, look, you know, this is a great piece of content. Doctor Who's coming out. Why wouldn't you want to use it? Um, and they used it and picked up nearly 9,000 shares. Now, those of you who are in social media, get nine shares is hard, let alone 9,000. Okay, retweets. Uh, so it had social traction. But also one of these things, you know, going back to that slide a few uh, slides ago, was that creating this content right in the middle and allowing everybody else to do the work. So this piece of content alone generated 525 links to our client site. Okay, now fr from, a, from a funnel point of view, we're all talking about funnels these days and conversion funnels. Okay, you've got to put a lot of websites at the top of that funnel to generate 525 websites out of the bottom of that funnel. Okay, so taking a month or so to create research, this content has probably generated three, four, six months worth of links in one go. Okay, so again, Mashable talking about you, lots of links, lots of social traction, great exposure for that brand. Doesn't always have to be infographics. Okay, sometimes people don't share infographics, don't want to know. Okay, so they are quite cliche these days. You've got to do something very special for someone to share it. So think about competition. Okay, this is a reasonably small uh, retailer of ours that, that sell mobile phone accessories, you know, skins, covers, that sort of stuff. Um, this is more an example of saying, well, it's not just the big boys who are able to get on the big sites, okay? The smaller, and we sometimes root even greater for the smaller people because getting on a site like Engadget to a client, a client of ours is transformational almost. Okay, so by putting out this competition, by giving us away an HTC One phone, which is probably worth 250 quid to the organization, maybe even less, by doing that, we're able to gain a lot of traction, okay? So again, first of all, we get the link from Engadget back to the client site, so that creates a huge uh, influence for, for, for the client. Uh, we get some social traction, but for this one, more importantly, what we also get are 15,500 entries for this competition. Okay, now that's data that the client can use in their email marketing efforts. Okay, you might have some serial competition enterers who just enter competitions because they've got nothing else to do. But, so there will be some wastage there. But even if you say half of those are wastage, half of those you know are interested in HTC, HTC products. So you can segment those in your email marketing efforts to say, right, we're going we're gonna, to uh, promote HTC products to this audience. Okay, so again, think about this real world benefit that comes back. So, so everything's intertwined, okay? This idea of SEO being siloed is gone. And if that's the way you've still got it, I would urge you to change it. It needs to be brought in. They need to be engaged with you as an organization, talking about what you're doing, looking at seasonal planners, looking at your campaign activity to see what you've got to leverage uh, any um, SEO benefit, okay? And then one last piece uh, as well that we did, you know, again, there's lots of people that, that talk a good game, but there's very few who can walk a good game. Um, th this is one that we did ourselves, and apologies, David, we didn't use explain for this. Um, but, but we did a, a piece of informative research about the gender pay gap in the IT sector. Okay, now again, very on topic, very kind of, you know, um, women's lib, apologies, not being sexist, but you know, it, it, it looked at qualitative research to say uh, this is how much men get paid in these companies, the top, tech, top 10 uh, tech companies, the likes of Apple and Google and IBM, so all of this is publicly uh, available information. 
pull that together to say, well, actually, there's, a, there's quite a decent disparity between uh, what the top executives in those firms are being paid based on gender. Okay, so, so this is a very informative piece. Okay, so, so it's very different to an infographic. You know, we, we don't just put it out with a little smiley face on it. Okay, this, this is real uh, research. Okay, and, and what we also get from this is, uh, it got picked up by the Huffington Post, BBC interview uh, through the back of this from the contributor, uh, gained social traction and, and, and links, of course. We've always got that links benefit. Okay, but what this also does is it becomes a, an annual piece so that, so that when the top 10 tech companies produce all of their annual accounts, we're able to troll back through that data and see has it changed. Okay, so, so this then becomes an annual piece which creates MediaWorks as, a, as an aggregator of this research, which then puts us forward as, a, as an informative, credible company. Okay, so these are examples of content marketing that, that are happening in the marketplace uh, that can create, now, look, yeah, these are, these are uh, great examples here. You know, you, you could look at sites like the journal, you know, has any of you approached the journal or the chronicle in terms of saying, well, instead of just putting an editorial piece out, how can we, how can we do something different? Go and approach the editors, you know, the digital editors of those, of those guys, and I used to work there, so, uh, you know, speak to them. Sky News, Time and Weir have just launched recently. They're urgent to get market share from NCJ. They, they really are. So if you go to them and say, look, you know, can we do something together, you're likely to put something out there, okay? And that's a link from Sky News. So, so lots of opportunities. You just need to think about how you uh, take advantage of those opportunities. Um, so very much, you know, starting to think about what's best for your users, okay? And understanding what's best for your users. Not understanding or thinking what's best for your users. Very different, okay? Um, and start earning those links and putting great content out there. And, and it has wider benefit than just SEO benefit. Equally, it has that benefit as well, okay? So uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hopefully, uh, that was useful. Um, if it wasn't, then please don't see me afterwards. And uh, yeah, I think we've got some time for, for Q&A, and I am going to grab a, a quick drink, because I'm yeah, dry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks.